What is going on turd nerds? Matt here with Operator Mindset and in today's video we are finally going to get into some denitrification. Now is it everything you should ever need to know about denitrification? No it is not but it's a pretty good start. In the video we are going to talk about this second step process denitrification which comes after what? nitrification if you haven't seen our video on nitrification finish this one first and then go check it out and then watch this one again so it makes total and absolute sense denitrification we're going to talk about what it is why we even care about it how is it taking place what all does it take to take place and we're going to also talk about alkalinity how are we getting alkalinity back out of this deal? Then at the end, we're gonna talk about some things I think you should be familiar with if you're planning on taking an exam anytime soon. So stick around for that, make sure you give it a thumbs up and make sure you are subscribed to the Operator Mindset YouTube channel. Let's get into it. Denitrification, what is it, right? It follows nitrification. So can you denitrify if you haven't nitrified? No. The answer was no, you can't. Now, denitrification is a biological process that requires several things in order for it to take place. Number one, anoxic conditions. Number two, the facultative bacteria responsible for the denitrifying. So what is denitrification? It is converting NO3, which is nitrate, to NO2, which is nitrite, to N2, which is nitrogen gas. So Matt, why do I gotta denitrify? Why do I even care whether I denitrify or not? Well, great question, little Johnny. The reason we want to denitrify is because during nitrification, we are producing high levels of nitrate. What is nitrate? Nitrate's a fertilizer. Go to any hardware store, whatever one's closest to you, pick up a bag of fertilizer, I bet you it's probably got some nitrate in it. We don't want this excessive nutrient going into our receiving body of water because of eutrophication. High nutrients being in the receiving stream can cause, can lead to algae blooms, ex, this excess nutrients. When these overgrown aquatic plants die, they actually consume oxygen. This creates a hypoxic condition in the water, which is fatal to fish and other aquatic life. So yes, we want to remove that nitrate from the final effluent so that we are not potentially causing eutrophication downstream. Another very big reason you should be familiar with, high levels of nitrates found in drinking water can cause a condition called metahemoglobinia, I think I got that on the first take, otherwise known as blue baby syndrome. Now I know you're like, well, we're talking about wastewater. Well, if we are expelling final effluent into a receiving stream, shouldn't we be concerned that some of that water could make it into the groundwater table? Or if somebody downstream is pulling it out as a water source? Hmm, you make a good point, Matthew. Yes, you need to be familiar that high nitrates in drinking water can cause blue baby syndrome, a condition very common in infants who consume that water and then they literally turn blue. I would be familiar with that. Now that we know why we need to denitrify in order to treat this potentially high level of nitrate, let's talk about what denitrification is. The denitrification process is NO3 to NO2 to N2 or nitrate to nitrite to nitrogen gas. Now there's two other gases I want you to be familiar with, but remember this, the overall majority of gas produced during the denitrification process is the nitrogen gas or N2. It's a all natural gas, it evaporates up into the atmosphere harmlessly. There are certain facultative organisms or the denitrifiers that can only get it to a certain state of gas. Certain ones can't get it all the way to that N2 nitrogen gas state. They can only get it to the nitrous oxide or N2O state, 
which is just laughing gas. Then there's also a very, very small portion, like 1%, that can only get it to nitric oxide, or NO. I don't think you're gonna have to know too much about these other two gaseous forms, but I did want you guys out there to be familiar with them and know that they have the potential to be being formed during the denitrification process. But again, the overall majority of the gas produced is this N2 nitrogen gas during denitrification. Now that we understand the denitrification process and the steps involved, let's talk about the four things we have to have in order for denitrification to take place. Number one, anoxic conditions. Number two, the heterotrophic bacteria. Number three, nitrate. And number four, BOD. Let's cover nitrate and BOD first, even though that's three and four, but we know those two things are going to be present in our wastewater. We have BOD coming in through our raw influent. We also have nitrate being produced through the nitrification process. How do we know this? Because nitrification has to take place before what? Denitrification. You're getting it. So now that we have nitrate and BOD present, let's talk about the bacteria that have to be there in order for this process to happen. These bacteria have a few different names. You can call them denitrifiers, facultative bacteria, or heterotrophic bacteria. I would make sure that you know heterotrophic bacteria are responsible for BOD consumption and denitrification. I'd remember that. These denitrifying bacteria make up 80% of the bacteria present in your aeration basin, in the activated sludge process, 80%. There's many different kinds of them and these critters are specialized because they are able to consume free molecular oxygen when present and when that oxygen is taken away, they are able to then utilize bound oxygen, the same oxygen bound in that nitrate and nitrite compound. They can utilize that oxygen to continue to consume the BOD present. There's many different kinds of them and most of them are able to break down that nitrate all the way to that N2 nitrogen gas. But some of them just can't do that. It's important to remember that heterotrophic bacteria are present alongside autotrophic bacteria in your aeration basin. They're all mixing in there together and it's not like we got them in here separating them out into trays, okay? They are all just bound in there, all rolling around. So heterotrophic bacteria are right there alongside your autotrophic bacteria. Now we should know from watching nitrification, the autotrophs are super sensitive and they are required for nitrification. And they need lots and lots of air during that process. Well, these heterotrophic bacteria are right there alongside them. They actually prefer that free molecular oxygen, that stuff we're pumping to them through the blowers. They love it. And they're right there consuming the BOD, right there inside the aeration basin. But it's important to remember that denitrification only happens once you introduce the anoxic zone. Once we take away that free molecular oxygen and put everything into an anoxic zone, now these heterotrophic bacteria can shine. They can utilize that bound oxygen as their oxygen source while still continuing to degrade the BOD present and consume it for energy and reproduction and growth. During this anoxic phase, most of your autotrophic bacteria that you need to nitrify go dormant or take them a little nap until they are then reintroduced into aeration. This is denitrification. Anoxic zones, heterotrophic bacteria, nitrate and BOD present. All of those factors will lead to a good denitrification phase in your process. Once this happens, you have now officially, biologically, removed nitrogen from the wastewater. One more thing to be familiar about is simultaneous denitrification. So this is something that does take place. 
but it is not really a planned thing. It can just happen. So in your aeration basin, once a flock particle builds to be so large, that internal section of the flock that the air can't penetrate to actually becomes like a small anoxic zone. And the outer shell of that flock is where all the aeration and nitrification takes place. But on the inside, denitrification can start to take place because there's bacteria in there. That is simultaneous denitrification. But again, that's not something that we're sitting there trying to plan out to happen. It can just happen on its own. The way we make sure denitrification takes place and we remove that nitrate from the wastewater, get the nitrogen out of it, is through introducing everything into an anoxic zone where there is no free oxygen present and that is when the heterotrophic bacteria start to utilize the bound oxygen. Now let's talk about alkalinity and how we're getting that back. The denitrification process breaking down that NO3 to NO2 to N2 nitrogen gas is consuming acidity. It is releasing a hydroxide ion during that process. That process is consuming acid. That acid being consumed is forming bicarbonate, which is just alkalinity. So that process of breaking it down from nitrate to N2 nitrogen gas is releasing that hydroxide ion and actually generating bicarbonate, which is then replenishing roughly half of your alkalinity that you've lost during nitrification. So the best way to look at it is a good, well-run facility is always really losing alkalinity by the end process. You are losing alkalinity during a good nitrification process, but during a good denitrification process, you are regaining some of what you lost, roughly 50%. But the overall end product is you have lost some alkalinity from your system. Now, things I think you should know for your exam. Denitrification follows nitrification. It is a biological process. Know that it requires four things to happen. BOD, nitrate, facultative or heterotrophic organisms, and anoxic conditions. The denitrification process is how you are removing nitrogen from the wastewater. Remember that. Don't forget, heterotrophic bacteria are the ones doing the work in this denitrification process. They can utilize that bound oxygen when there is no free oxygen available. I would know the definition of eutrophication. I would also know that high levels of nitrate in the drinking water can cause blue baby syndrome or metahemoglobinia. Good luck saying that one in your exam. Be familiar with the denitrification process and their compound names. Know that NO3 goes to NO2 goes to N2 or nitrate to nitrite to nitrogen gas. Also remember, denitrification actually regains alkalinity. Roughly 50% of the alkalinity lost during nitrification, you regain back during denitrification. There you have it guys. I hope this video was helpful in explaining the denitrification process. Again, Remember, it follows nitrification. You cannot denitrify if you don't nitrify first. Make sure you check out our video on nitrification if you haven't already. Give the video a thumbs up if you found it helpful. And as always, make sure you are subscribed to the Operator Mindset YouTube channel for more videos like this all the time. Thank you guys. Turn it out.